So let me review quickly how the buffer emptying works. Basically, as I said in the previous video, you empty the buffer of the parent by reading all the outputs, all the elements, sorting them, and then in sorting them in chunks of size m, and then passing them to the children. And then we analyze that this takes exactly this many, at most this many items. One result of this operation is the following invariant, that if we have, if we have emptied the buffer of this node v, then we have also emptied the buffers of all the nodes that lie on the root to leaf path from this node. In other words, if I empty the buffer of v, I have emptied the parent of v, and parent of parent of v, and etc. This means that when it comes to rebalancing of the insertions, we don't have a problem. Because if I need to rebalance this node v, the buffer of v is empty, so I just split it in two, and then this extra node that I get will also have its buffer empty. If this causes the parent to split, well, the parent's buffer is empty, so therefore we'll call, it will create, let's say, two nodes whose buffers are empty, and so on. But we have a small issue when it comes to deletions. This is because one case of the deletion is when um, when the node has too few elements, it has to be fused with its parent. We know that the buffer of all the ancestors of V is empty, but the buffer of its sibling could be not empty. In this case, we first empty the buffer of V prime by pushing it to the children before emptying the buffer of uh, before doing this merging. It's going to make the analysis a little bit you know, detailed. We have to pay attention to the detail when it comes to analysis. Okay, so now let's look at the analysis. First, we let's not count the rebalancing. Just look at the buffer emptying operations. Um, as we discussed, when you have a node with x elements in its buffer, emptying it takes x over b ions. So that means the total node emptying in is uh, is this much. Why is it this much? Um, this is, we can get this by just counting what is the average number of uh, IOs that the element participates in. Okay? When you look at one node, an, an element participates in one over B IOs, right? because we have X elements, and in total I'm spending X over B IOs. So on average, I have one over B IOs per element. But an element could travel all the way down the tree, right? So an element could be inserted at the root, then it could go to the child of the root, then the child of the child, of, all the way up to, to the end of the tree. Okay? The height of the tree is this much. So this is the height of the tree. This is because the internal branching parameter is said to be m over b. Okay, so therefore the height of the tree is log base m over b of n over b. Okay? So therefore, um, an element can travel at most this log base m over b of n over b nodes, and at each node that it travels to can essentially consume 1 over b, one over b ions on average. So therefore, if I'm processing n elements in total, that means that my total cost of this buffer emptying is this much, which is the same as sorting. So now let's look at the rebalancing operations. Um, so let's look at deletion. So when it comes to deletion, um, I might need to empty uh, a non-full buffer because of the issue that we discussed. So, so that could add this much extra IOs to whatever IOs that I'm doing. Okay. Um, so that means the cost of these rebalancing, I could say that it's this much. Okay. But now we're going to use the um, observations that we had that we had from before. If you remember, in an A B tree, the the expected number of times we needed to do internal rebalancing as well as leaf rebalancing was n divided by a and then and a divided by k. Okay. Since um, 
the value, the, the branching parameter of the leaf is set to be B or theta of B. The leaf fuse and split is this much because that's the branching parameter of the of the uh, of the leaves. Branching of leaf nodes. Similarly, the branching parameter of the internals was this much. And this was also the branching parameter of the leaves. And if you go back to those slides, we claim that the number of internal rebalancing is n divided by the branching parameter of the leaves divided by the branching parameters of the internal nodes. So it's, 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 we have this much internal rebalancing. When you add all of them up, you'll see that in total they are still bounded by essentially the sorting complexity. So that shows that all of these operations that we're going to do over n operations, we have the, essentially the sort bound. So this shows that we can actually sort using this basic buffer tree.